Okay, so some of you had a question about how to make uh, X11 uh, really work with your Windows computer uh, by using uh, PuTTY like I've shown and spoken about to some of you. Um, I want to first say if you're in Las Vegas, um, whether you have a child or you yourself, uh, an adult or almost adult, uh, want to learn about the Raspberry Pi and uh, want to do stuff with it and maybe just in general would like to one, learn about it and two, do projects and uh, brief programming and just really do some cool stuff with your Raspberry Pi. I highly recommend you check out the Syn Shop, that's S-Y-N Shop, uh, that's here in downtown Las Vegas. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, how should I put it, working with uh, one of the main uh, organizers, Bill, uh, and we're going to be doing a Raspberry Pi class here in uh, Vegas. So if you're not in Vegas and uh, you're planning to come to Vegas, uh, you should definitely check out uh, the Syn Shop. You could go to their meetup uh uh, page that's meetup.com um, and check out the sin shop it's a hacker space um, but yeah hopefully we'll be teaching kids and uh, people like whoever you are uh, man woman or child uh, so anyways let's get into this uh, so we're gonna open up putty here okay now I have the defaults already for my Raspberry Pi here um, the way you do that you fill it out type what you want and then say I recommend you do this for every Pi you have or any Linux server or clusters you connect to uh, that you tunnel into uh, so we're gonna load it so here's the IP address of my Pi the port 22 uh, SSH is selected I put always on here uh, that's up to you but we'll go to SSH and remember make sure it's two in fact you could select two only but uh, by default uh, in my settings on my Pi, I have it to only allow uh, two. Um, so first, now depending on who you are, uh, you may have to fill this out. Uh, I don't know what you have for security on your Pi, uh, but right now that really doesn't matter. You need to go to X11 and enable X11 forwarding. In this case, we're going to do X display location localhost colon zero, uh, and I prefer XDM auth uh, authorization. Uh, one um, only because if you look in the Raspberry Pi Project podcast, I make you guys uh, uh, use XDM preferably, right? So that looks good, right? So everything else, if you tunnel through a proxy or whatever, you can go ahead and set that up. Uh, but otherwise, everything else looks good, then that's all you need. Now, I'm using a program called XLaunch, okay? So you can have multiple windows. So it could be just like how Putty is in that program. It's a single window. You can have one window with all the um, uh, programs you're trying to launch in that. You could do a full screen thing, uh, or you can have one window without the title bar, which I think is silly. So in this case, uh, we're just gonna do multiple windows to make it look like as if it was a Windows environment only, right? Uh, and display number zero. And why does that matter? Uh, simply because in our X11 settings, we're saying localhost, which is the current computer we're connecting from, uh, and uh, display number zero, which is what this will be listening to. So when we connect to something uh, via SSH through Putty, uh, and it detects something connecting on that display number, uh, XLaunch will go ahead and load it. Uh, so we're gonna do multiple windows, uh, so we'll go ahead and do next and just start no client. We don't want to start a program remotely or anything. We want to enable the clipboard. Uh, we, you could save the configuration unless you want to change it, but we'll go ahead and finish. Okay. We know it's there because if you look down here, the server's running uh, 0, 0.0. So we'll go ahead and click open. Put in our Raspberry Pi password. Okay, so we're connected, right? How do we know for sure? Okay, we're connected, PyCast. Um, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, I might have a file in here, and I do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, do mplayer uh, anode and load that up. So now, in a second, a window will pop up. Oh, actually, I didn't load the GUI. Uh, that's stupid of me, hold on. I should have done G, G player. 
I believe it's G player. No. GM player? There we go. Now this should load the uh, uh, GUI version. And it did. So as you see here, oop, it crashed. Uh, or maybe it didn't crash, but it's not loading it properly. So that's a bad example, but you get the idea. You could load that uh, remotely. So now you have a problem like this, which I actually literally did this on purpose. Uh, this is my second go around to show you guys. Um, right now you go, oh gosh, what am I gonna do? I can't close it. As you see up here, you can't access it, anything. You go here, you double click it, nothing's happening, right? You can exit, true, or just press control uh, C and it'll cancel it. So let's say you wanted Midori, right? Just hit Midori. Now it's connecting to the X11 server. How do we know? See? And it pops up just like it's a Windows uh, window, right? So you're technically literally running this as if it was Win uh, Linux on top of Windows, uh, which may be smart to do, maybe not. But if you wanted to run your Linux programs and whatnot without having to uh, utilize uh, uh, Linux as your main desktop OS, this is another way to do it. I probably wouldn't use the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I would use something a lot quicker, like an older laptop that had a little bit more processing speed, but it can be done. Um, so technically, if we do something like SinShop, I think it's .com, I could be wrong, or maybe it's org, actually. Again, it's slow. We're dealing with the Raspberry Pi here, and we are connecting remotely. Right? So that's apparently not it. That's definitely not it. So um, it could have been .org. Oh, but forget that actually. Let's do their meetup, right? Uh, I believe it's Sin Shop. And I could be even getting that wrong. <laughs> no, I got it right. So meetup.com forward slash sin shop. And as you see, we're loading that right in Midori. Um, and you could tell, see, it launched it right in here. And we're using the X11, as you see right down here. So if we take it away, it's gone. Bring it back, it's there. Um, so yeah, and so that way you have the uh, Midori browser loaded on top of Windows um, right through that. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. You exit out, just like as if it was Windows. Boom. Let's say you want an X term, right? Or better yet, um, well, let's see. What could we load? Um, I wasn't planning on doing any more examples, but uh, what else do we have in there? Uh, I think we have VLC. So here you'll see we're going to load VLC, and again, uh, the GUI will load through X11 because we're forwarding that port, and there you go. Now you have VLC, so if there was audio or video remotely, you could be technically be playing it. So if it was hooked up to your Raspberry Pi or you're using something like the PiCast, um, you could remotely connect to it and change it. Now this is not uh, the same as a, a VNC server. This is literally forwarding a connection uh, to your uh, Linux operating system. Doesn't matter if it's the Raspberry Pi, just in general, that's exactly what we're doing here. Uh, so that gives you an idea of what we're doing. So again, we can go ahead and press Control C and it cancels it. Anyhow, uh, I think that should do it. I embarrassed myself enough uh, uh, getting something wrong. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you get the point.